Today we'll discuss ISIS 2021 QRR objective paper and the first question is if NC0 plus NC1 into NC1 plus NC2 up to NCN minus 1 plus NCN equals K into NC0, NC1, NCN minus 1 we need to find value of K. Now on the left hand side we'll take NC0, NC1, NC2 up to NCN common then we can write NC0 into NC1, NCN minus 1 and here it will be 1 plus C1 upon C0, 1 plus C2 upon C1 and 1 plus Cn upon Cn minus 1. Now we compare it with the right hand side that means this is your K. Now we can write this K as this product r varies from 1 to n 1 plus ncr upon ncr minus 1. Now we can write this as this product from 1 to n and 1 plus ncr upon ncr minus 1 is n minus r plus 1 upon r. Now we simplify it we can write this as n plus 1 upon r. Now we will put the value of r it will be n plus 1 upon 1 into n plus 1 upon 2 up to n plus 1 upon n which is n plus 1 n plus 1 n plus 1 n times n upon 1 into 2 into 3 up to n which is factorial n. So value of k is n plus 1 to the power n upon factorial n and that is your option a. Now question number 2 is we are given if g dash x equals fx we need to find this integral x cube into fx square dx. Now if g dash x equals fx we can write integral of fx dx it will be simply gx. Now in order to solve this question we need to solve this integral which is 2x into fx square dx. Now if we take x square st we can write this as ft dt and integral of ft dt will be gt plus c which is gx square plus c. Now we will start solving this question. Now we will write this integral as 1 by 2 x square into 2x fx square into dx and we will solve this integral using by parts. So this is our first function and this is our second function. So we can write this as 1 by 2 and then x square as it is integral of this function is gx square minus and then this integral sign derivative of x square is 2x into this integral which is gx square dx plus c dash. So it will be 1 by 2 x square gx square minus now 2 and 2 will cancel. So it will be x gx square dx plus c and which is your option b. Now question number 3 is consider the system of linear equations x plus y plus z equals 5 and 2x plus 2y plus 3z equals 4 then which of the following is correct. Now these two equations they will represent two planes in 3D space. Now for this first plane direction ratios of the normal are 1 1 and 1 and for the second plane they are 2 2 and 3. Now their ratios are 1 by 2 1 by 2 and 1 by 3 which is not equal. So that means these two planes they are non-parallel planes. Now if the two planes are non-parallel then these two planes they will intersect in a line. So there will be infinitely many points which satisfy the system of linear equation. So this system has infinitely many solutions and that's your option C. Now question number 4 is if f is a continuous function such that fx equals 2 minus under root x plus 4 upon sin 2x we need to find value of f0. Now f0 will be this limit x tends to 0 2 minus under root of x plus 4 upon sin 2x. Now this is 0 upon 0 form. Now we rationalize it. So we write 
टू प्लस अंडर रूट एक्स प्लस फोर अपॉन टू प्लस अंडर रूट एक्स प्लस फोर विच इज दिस लिमिट एक्सटेंड्स टू जीरो नाउ ही एल बी फोर माइनस एक्स माइनस फोर विच इज माइनस एक्स अपॉन साइन टू एक्स इंटू टू प्लस अंडर रूट ऑफ एक्स प्लस फोर नाउ ही वील मल्टीप्लाइड विथ टू एंड वी डिवाइडेड विथ टू नाउ टू एक्स अपॉन साइन टू एक्स इट इज वन and if we put x as 0 it will be 2 plus 2 4 so this value will be minus 1 by 8 so if this function is continuous then the value of f0 must be minus 1 by 8 and that's your option a now question number 5 is suppose abc are in ap and a square b square c square are in gp such that a is less than b is less than c and a plus b plus c is 3 by 2 we need to find value of a now if abc are in ap then 2b equals a plus c now if we put the value of a plus c here we'll get 3b equals 3 by 2 that is the value of b is 1 by 2 now if we put b as 1 by 2 we'll get this equation as a plus c equals 1 and from this gp we'll get b to the power 4 equals a square c square or a into c is plus or minus b square which is plus or minus 1 by 4 now we'll put the value of c here so we'll get a into 1 minus a and it'll be plus or minus 1 by 4 which is 4a minus 4a square equals plus or minus 1 now we'll subtract to one both sides and here if we take minus common we can write minus 2a minus 1 whole square it'll be plus minus 1 minus 1 or 2a minus 1 whole square will be equal to 1 minus plus 1. Now 1 minus 1 is 0 and 1 plus 1 is 2. So either we'll get a as 1 by 2 or we'll get 2a minus 1 as plus or minus root 2. Now a cannot be 1 by 2 as a is strictly less than b. So from here we'll get this condition that a is 1 plus minus. Root two by two, which is one by two plus minus one by root two. Now this a is less than one by two. That means value of a must be one by two minus one by root two, and that's your option D. Now the sixth question is: We need to find set of all a satisfying the inequality one upon under root a, and then this integral from one to a three by two under root x. Plus one minus one by under root x dx and it is less than four. Now we can write this as one upon under root a, and here it will be three by two x to the power three by two upon three by two, which will cancel from one to a, and then plus x from one to a, and then minus x to the power one by two upon one by two from one to a and it is less than four so it'll be one upon under root a and here it'll be a root a minus one plus a minus one and here it will be two root a plus two that is less than four now two and minus two will cancel we can write this as A plus under root a minus two. It is less than four. Or under root a square plus under root a minus six. It is less than zero, which is root a plus three into root a minus two. It is less than zero. Now this is always positive, so we can remove it. From here we can write under root a is less than two, or a is Less than four, and since we have this square root sign, so this a it must be greater than zero. So the set of values of a will be from zero to four, and that's your option D. Now question number seven is: You are given a matrix A whose order is four cross four, such that both A and adjoint A they are non-null matrices. Now if determinant of A is zero, then we need to find rank of A. 
Now, if determinant of a is zero, then rank of a it cannot be four. That is, the rank of a it should be three or less than three. Now we are given that adjoint A, it is not a null matrix. It simply means there will be at least one minor which is non-zero. And it means that rank of A, it must be 3 and that's your option C. Now question number 8 is a person throws a pair of fair die. If the sum of numbers on the die is a perfect square, then we need to find the probability that number 3 appeared on at least one of the dice. Now let this be event A and let it be event B. Now A is when sum of numbers on the dice is a perfect square. Now it will be perfect square if the sum is 4 or the sum is 9. Now it can be 4 if it is 1, 3, 2, 2 and 3, 1 and it will be 9 when we have 6, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4 and 3, 6. Now we need to find this probability B by A and probability of B by A is probability of B intersection A upon probability of A. Now B intersection A is sum on the numbers must be a perfect square and it should have at least 1, 3. So it will be 1, 3, 3, 1. 3, 6 and 6, 3 which is 4 by 36 and probability of A is 7 by 36. So this required conditional probability is simply 4 by 7 and that's your option B. Now question number 9 is we are given C0 which is set of all continuous functions F and C1 which is set of all differentiable functions G such that derivative G dash is continuous. Now if we define a function t from c1 to c0 given by t equals g dash then we need to find which of the following options is correct. Now this function clearly it cannot be a one one function because we can always consider two functions which differ only by a constant and in that case both of them they will be mapped to the same function in c0. So this function is not a one one function. Now what about on to now fundamental theorem of calculus says for any f in c0 we can define a function fx which is given by this integral from 0 to x ft dt and in this case this f it is inverse image of f under t that means this function t it is an on to function so this function t is on to but not 1 to 1 and that's your option C. Now question number 10 is we are given S which is a set of n elements and we need to find number of ways in which n distinct non-empty subsets x1, x2 up to xn can be chosen such that x1 is a subset of x2 and it goes on up to xn. Now since we need n distinct non-empty subsets it is possible if and only if x1 has one element x2 has two elements, x3 has three elements and xn has all the n elements. Now since x1 is a subset of x2, so this x2 will contain this one element of x1, this x3 will contain these two elements of x2 and xn will contain n minus one elements of xn minus one. Now we need to find in how many ways we can choose these subsets. Now for this x1, we need to choose one from n elements and it can be done in nc1 ways. Now for x2, we need to choose two elements, but then we already have one. So from the remaining n minus one elements, we have to select one element. Now for x3, we already have two elements. We just need to select one from the remaining, which is n minus two c1 and it'll continue up to one c1. Now this is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 up to 1 which is nothing but factorial n. So the total number of ways is factorial n and that's your option C. Now in question number 11 we are given the sequence which is fn x equals 
x to the power n cos 2 pi n x when x belongs to minus 1 and plus 1. And we need to find this limit n tends to infinite f n x. Now, if we consider this first case, when the value of x is 1, we can write f n 1 as 1 into cos 2 n pi and cos 2 n pi is 1. So, in this case, limit n tends to infinite f n x will be simply 1. So, for x equal to 1, this limit exists. Now, we will consider the second case when the value of x is minus 1. Now, we will have f n minus 1 and it will be minus 1 to the power n cos 2 n pi into minus 1 which is minus 1 to the power n. Now, if we take this limit n tends to infinite f n x then in that case this value it can be either minus 1 or plus 1 that is we will get an oscillating value. So, in this case this limit it does not exist. And finally when x lies between minus 1 and plus 1 in that case this mod xn cos 2n pi x will be mod of x to the power n into mod of cos 2n pi x and if we take this limit n tends to infinite now this is oscillating value from 0 to 1 and, and since mod x it lies between 0 and 1 this is 0 now 0 into anything finite is simply 0 in this case also this limit exists so this limit will exist if and only if x belongs to the interval where minus 1 is not included and 1 is included and that's your option b now question number 12 is we need to find number of distinct even divisors of this product now this is factorial 1 into factorial 2 into factorial 3 into factorial 4 into factorial 5. Now this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 into 2. Now factorial 4 is 2 square into 3 into 2 and factorial 5 is 5 into 2 square into 3 into 2. Now this is 2 to the power 8, 3 cube into 5. Now we need to find number of distinct even divisors. Now if this divisor is an even number then from 2 to the power 8 we will have 8 choices because choices they start from 2 to the power 0 to 2 to the power 8 and since it is an even number it should have at least 1 2. So total number of choices is 8. Now for 3 to the power 3 number of choices is 4 and for 5 to the power 1 number of choices 2. So it will be 8 into 8 which is 64 and that is your option C. Now question number 13 is a straight line passes through the intersection of lines given by 3x minus 4y plus 1 and 5x plus y minus 1 equals 0 and makes equal intercepts of the same sign on the coordinate axis. We need to find equation of this straight line. Now first we will find equation of family of lines which passes through point of intersection of two given lines. So we can write this as 3 plus 5 lambda x plus minus 4 plus lambda y and then 1 minus lambda equals 0. Now slope of this line is minus coefficient of x which is 3 plus 5 lambda upon minus 4 plus lambda and since it makes equal intercepts of same sign its slope must be minus 1. So this minus and minus will cancel we will get 3 plus 5 lambda will be minus 4 plus lambda that is 4 lambda equals minus 7 the value of lambda is minus 7 by 4. Now if you put the value of lambda in this equation we will get 3 minus 35 by 4 into x plus minus 4 minus 7 by 4 into y and then 1 plus 7 by 4 equals 0. 
So here will be 12 minus 35 is minus 23x. And then minus 16 minus 7 is minus 23y. And then 7 plus 4 is 11 equals 0. So equation of this line will be 23x plus 23y minus 11 equals 0. And that's your option D. Now question number 14 is, suppose G is a cyclic group and AB belongs to G. And let this cyclic group be generated by this element P. Now there does not exist any X such that X square equals A and there does not exist any Y such that Y square equals B. Then which of the following options is correct? Now if there is no element such that X square equals A, then this A, it must be an odd power of this generator P. So this A is of the form P to the power 2n plus 1 in the same way B must also be an odd power. So let it be P to the power 2m plus 1. Now we multiply them we can write AB as P to the power 2n plus 2m plus 2 that is P to the power m plus n plus 1 whole square. Now this is some element say g. So in this case we will get g square equals ab. So there exists an element g in g such that g square equals ab and that's your option a. Now question number 15 is let d be the triangular region in the xy plane with vertices at 0 0 0 1 and 1 1. So we have this triangular region. So this is 0 0 this is 0 1 and this is 1 comma 1 and in this region we need to find value of this double integral. Now this is y is equal to x line. Now this point is x comma x and this point will be x comma 1. So we can write this integral as this integral from 0 to 1 and then for y it will be from x to 1 2 upon 1 plus x square dx into dy. So it will be this integral from 0 to 1 2 upon 1 plus x square and then from x to 1 dy into dx. Now we integrate this we will get this as 1 minus x. So it will be this integral from 0 to 1 2 times 1 minus x dx upon 1 plus x square. So it will be this integral from 0 to 1 2 dx upon 1 plus x square and then minus this integral from 0 to 1 2 x dx upon 1 plus x square. Now this is 2 times and then 10 inverse x from 0 to 1 and then minus log 1 plus x square from 0 to 1. So it will be 2 times. Now 10 inverse 1 is pi by 4 and minus log 2. So value of this integral will be pi by 2 minus log 2 and that's your option B. Now question number 16 is we need to find number of saddle points of this function. Now if we find fx, fx will be 8x cube minus 2x and if we put it equals to 0 we will get x as 0 x as 1 by 2 and x as minus 1 by 2 and if we find fy it will be 6y and if we put it equals to 0 we will get y equals 0 so we get three critical points 0 0 1 by 2 comma 0 and minus 1 by 2 comma 0 now we will find fxx will be 24x square minus 2, fyy will be 6 and then fxy and which is 0. Now we will find h which is ab minus c square. So this is a, this is b and this is c. Now ab minus c square will be 24x square minus 2 into 6. Now for 0, 0, this h will be minus 12 
and which is less than zero. So this zero comma zero will be a saddle point. And for plus minus one by two comma zero, this H it will be twenty four into one by four, which is six. Six minus two is four, so four into six is twenty four, which is greater than zero. So here there won't be any saddle point. So number of saddle points for this function will be simply one, and that's your option A. Now question number seventeen is suppose A and B are two square matrices such that the largest eigen value of A B minus B A is positive, then the smallest eigen value of A B minus B A is. Now since we are talking about smallest and largest eigen values, that means all the eigen values. Of this matrix A B minus B A, they are real. Now we know that trace of A B minus B A is zero, and trace is nothing but sum of all the eigenvalues. So it simply means that sum of all the eigenvalues is zero. Now we are given that this largest eigenvalue is positive. Now sum of all the eigenvalues will be zero when this Least value it should be negative. Otherwise, it cannot be equal to zero. So the smallest eigen value of AB minus BA it must be negative, and that's your option B. Now question number eighteen is we are given this series. Now we need to find convergence and divergence of this series. Now first we'll use ratio test. We'll find limit n tends to infinite t n plus one upon t n, and it'll be This limit n tends to infinite. Now t n plus one will be three six nine up to three n and three n plus one upon seven ten thirteen up to three n plus four into three n plus seven. X to the power n plus one upon t n, which is three six nine up to three n upon seven ten up to three n plus four into x to the power n. Now all these terms they'll cancel. We'll get this as this limit n tends to infinite three n plus three upon Three n plus seven into x. Now we take this limit n tends to infinite. We'll get this as x. Now this series will diverge if x is greater than one, and it will converge if x is less than one. And at x equals to one, this test fails. Now when this ratio test fails, we'll use Rebs test. We'll find limit n tends to infinite n into t n upon t n plus one minus one. So it'll be this limit n tends to infinite n, and then here it will be three n plus seven upon three n plus three into one by x, and x here is one. Minus one, so it'll be this limit n tends to infinite n, and here will be four upon three n plus three, which is four by three. That means this series it converges for x equal to one. So answer to this question will be this series it converges for x lying between zero and one, where one is included, and it diverges for x greater than one. And that's your option A. Now, question number nineteen is: We are given an eigen value of A as minus one, and we are also told that A plus I is equal to this matrix. Now, from here we can write this matrix A as this matrix minus identity matrix will be zero zero minus two zero minus one zero and zero zero and minus one. Now we need to find Eigen vector corresponding to this eigen value minus one. So we can write 
a x equals minus x where this x is a b c now we can write this as a which is 0 0 minus 2 0 minus 1 0 0 0 minus 1 into a b c and it will be equal to minus a b c now if we multiply these two matrices we can write minus 2 c minus b minus c will be equal to minus a minus b and minus c now we compare the two matrices we will get a equals 2 c now in this case we can take any value and then a must be equal to 2 c so if c is t then a must be 2 t and b can take any real value so that means answer to this question is this option b now question number 20 is we need to find number of real roots of this polynomial which is x cube minus 2x plus 7 equals 0 now let it be some function f which is x cube minus 2x plus 7 now we find f dash x f dash x will be 3x square minus 2 and will be equal to 0 that is value of x is plus or minus root 2 by 3 so one of the values root 2 by 3 and the other values under root 2 by 3 rightmost is plus minus n plus so it will have a maximum at minus root 2 by root 3 and it will have a minimum at root 2 by root 3 now we find value of this function at minus root 2 by 3 so it will be minus root 2 by 3 and then x square minus 2 and x square minus 2 will be 2 by 3 minus 2 and then plus 7 so this value will be 7 plus 4 root 2 upon 3 root 3 and in the same way value of f root 2 by 3 will be 7 minus 4 root 2 upon 3 root 3 now both the values there positive so if we draw an approximate graph then its maxima will occur at minus root 2 by root 3 and its minima will occur at plus root 2 by root 3 and both maxima and minima they are positive so this graph will be drawn approximately like this which means that this graph will intersect x-axis at only one point so number of real roots of this polynomial will be simply one and that's your option B. Now question number 21 is, suppose phi is the solution of this differential equation such that phi 0 is 1 and phi dash 0 is 5, then which of the following option is correct? Now we are given a second order differential equation. We can write this as m square minus m minus 2 equals 0. So it will be m minus 2, m plus 1 equals 0. So value of m is 2 or value of m is minus 1 so we can write this 5x as a into e to the power 2x plus b into e to the power minus x now we given that phi 0 is 1 so phi 0 is a plus b and is equal to 1 and phi dash 0 will be 2a minus b and it is 5 now if we'll add them we'll get a as 2 and if the value of a is 2 value of b is minus 1 so we can write this 5x as 2 into e to the power 2x minus e to the power minus x now if x tends to infinite then in that case this expression will be plus infinite and this expression here will be 0 so if x tends to plus infinite then phi also tends to plus infinite now as x tends to minus infinite in that case here e be 0 and minus and l tend to infinity so if x tends to infinite then phi also tends to infinite so the correct option is as x tends to minus infinite 
phi also tends to minus infinite and that's your option C. Now question number 22 is, we need to find this limit t tends to 0 f u plus t v minus f u upon t. Now u is 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2 and v is 3 comma 4. Now u plus t v it will be 1 by 2 plus 3 t comma 1 by 2 plus 4 t. So we have to find this limit which is limit t tends to 0 f 1 by 2 plus 3 t comma 1 by 2 plus 4 t and minus f 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2 by t. Now f x y is x square into y minus 1. So we can write this as limit t tends to 0 1 by 2 plus 3 t whole square into 1 by 2 plus 4 t minus 1 and then minus will be 1 by 4 into minus 1 by 2 upon t which is 0 upon 0 form. Now before taking Lopetal's rule we we'll let this as 4 t minus 1 by 2. Now we'll differentiate the numerator and denominator separately we can write this as limit t tends to 0 and this is 2 into 1 by 2 plus 3 t into 3 and then 4 t minus half and then plus 1 by 2 plus 3 t square into 4 minus 0 upon 1. Now if we put t as 0 we will get this as minus 3 by 2 and then plus 1 which is minus 1 by 2. So answer to this limit will be minus 1 by 2 and that is your option C. Now 23 years we are given a real number alpha which lies between 0 and 1 and we have defined a sequence such that xn plus 1 equals alpha xn plus 1 minus alpha xn minus 1. Now what we will do is we will subtract xn we can write xn plus 1 minus xn will be alpha minus 1 and then xn minus xn minus 1. Now in the same way we can write this as alpha minus 1 square into xn minus 1 minus xn minus 2 and if we continue this iteration we can write this as alpha minus 1 to the power n x1 minus x0. So we can write xn plus 1 minus x0 will be alpha minus 1 to the power n x1 minus x0. Now in the same way we can write xn minus xn minus 1 will be alpha minus 1 to the power n minus 1 x1 minus x0 and finally we will get x1 minus x0 as alpha minus 1 to the power 0 x1 minus x0. Now if we add them all up on the left hand side we can write xn plus 1 minus x0 it will be x1 minus x0 into 1 plus alpha minus 1 plus alpha minus 1 square up to alpha minus 1 to the power n. Now what we will do is we will take this limit n tends to infinite. So it will be this limit n tends to infinite x n plus 1 minus x naught and here will be x1 minus x naught and then this series which is nothing but an infinite gp whose sum is a upon 1 minus r which is 1 minus alpha minus 1 so it will be x1 minus x naught upon 2 minus alpha we can write this limit n tends to infinite x n plus 1 is x1 minus x naught upon 2 minus alpha and then 
plus x naught so it will be x1 plus 1 minus alpha x naught upon 2 minus alpha x1 plus 1 minus alpha x naught upon 2 minus alpha and that's your option b now question number 24 is we are given two real valued functions f and g and f is given by x upon x minus 1 for x greater than 1 now if we subtract 1 and add 1 we can write fx is 1 plus 1 upon x minus 1 and it will be y minus 1 equals 1 upon x minus 1 which is shifted rectangular hyperbola this point here is 1 comma 1 Now, this function is clearly a 1, 1 function. Now, we need to check if this function is invertible. Now, the function is invertible if it is both 1, 1 and on 2. Now, for this function f, we are given the domain which is from 1 to infinite. But we are not specified any codomain. And when the codomain is not specified, we generally take this codomain as r. Now, in this case, its range is from 1 to infinite. And this codomain is r that means this function is 1 1 and into that means f inverse it won't exist for f now what about gx if we draw the graph of gx it'll be this graph now if we define g from r to r in that case this function is both 1 1 and on to so in this case g inverse it exists so answer to this question should be f inverse does not exist but g inverse does now the problem here is in absence of any codomain if we just have to check if it is 1 1 then in that case we'll get this answer as d so this question can have any answer either c or d depending on what we take as codomain of this function f but according to me better answer is this option c now question number 25 is we are given this matrix A we need to find number of element in this set A comma B belongs to Z square where both A and B they are greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 2021 and we are also given that rank of A is 2 and if rank of A is 2 then determinant of A is 0. Now for this determinant what we will do is we will write R1 as R1 minus R3 so it will be a minus 1 0 0 and b a 1 1 1 1 l b 0 so from here we'll get a minus 1 square e b 0 that is the value of a is 1 so there is only one way with which we can choose this a now since rank of a is 2 that means at least it should have one minor which is non-zero so this determinant 1 1 b1 it must not be equal to 0 that is b is unequal to 1 so b can take any value from the range 0 to 2 0 2 1 except 1 so that means we have 2021 choices for b so number of elements in this set will be 2021 and that's your option a now question number 26 is we are given this function f x minus y equals fx upon fy now this condition it is satisfied by exponential function so here this fx it must be a to the power x now if you find f dash x f dash x will be a to the power x log a now f dash 0 will be a to the power 0 which is 1 and then log a and f dash 0 is p so from here we can say value of log a is p now if we find f dash 5 f dash 5 will be a to the power 5 log a and it is q now log a is p so from here we can write a to the power 5 equals q by p now we need to find the value of f dash minus 5 now f dash minus 5 it will be a to the power minus 5 into log a now 1 upon a to the power 5 will be p by q 
and log a is simply p. So this value will be p square by q and that's your option d. Now question number 27 is consider the function f which is defined by fz equals e to the power z. Now for a real number c greater than 0, let a equals fz such that real part of z is equal to c. Now for this set a, we can write fz as e to the power c plus iota y and which is e to the power c into e to the power iota y. Now in this case, is modulus is constant and its argument, it is going to vary. Now if modulus is constant, and argument varies continuously, that means this set, it will be a circle. So this A will represent points on a circle. Now the set B is Fz such that imaginary part of Z is C. Now when imaginary part of Z is C, we can write Fz as e to the power x plus iota C. So it will be e to the power x into e to the power iota C. Now its argument it is fixed only its magnitude can change and when only magnitude changes and argument remains the same it will represent a straight line so this b it will be a straight line so answer to this question will be a is a circle and b is a straight line and that's your option b now question number 28 is two rows of n chairs facing each other are laid out the number of different ways that n couples can sit on these chairs such that each person sits directly opposite to his or her partner. Now we have n pair of chairs and we have n couples. Now these n couples, they can be arranged in n pairs in factorial n ways. Now in each pair, we have two seats. Now on these two seats, any one couple can be arranged in two ways. So for the first seat, there will be two choices. For the second seat also, we'll have two choices. For the n seat, we'll have two choices. So total number of ways in which they can sit is factorial n into 2 to the power n and that's your option C. Now question number 29 is, a fair die is rolled five times. What is the probability that largest number rolled is five? Now we'll find this probability by exclusion we'll find the probability that largest number is 5 or less. If the largest number is 5 or less, then we have 5 choices each. So this probability will be 5 by 6 into 5 by 6 into 5 by 6, 5 times. And then we'll subtract all the cases in which largest number is 4 or less. So if the largest number is 4 or less, then this probability will be 4 by 6 to the power 5. So this required probability is 5 by 6 to the power 5 minus 2 by 3 to the power 5 and that's your option D. Now question number 30 is a circle is drawn with center at minus 1 comma 1 let it be C1 and it touches this circle x square plus y square minus 4x plus 6y minus 3 equals to 0 externally then this circle touches which of the following options. Now for the second circle, center is at 2 comma minus 3 and its radius is under root of 4 plus 9 plus 3 and which is 4. Now if the two circles, they touch each other externally, then C1, C2, it must be equal to R1 plus R2. Now C1, C2 in this case is 3 square plus 4 square and R1 plus R2 is 4. Now this is 5, so 5 equals R1 plus 4, R1 is simply 1. So radius of this first circle is 1 unit. And if the radius of first circle is 1 unit, then it is going to touch both the axes. So this circle, it touches both the axes and that's your option A.